Littenborn is a young adult fantasy book written in 2020 by Tracy Theon, and it's her debut novel, and the book, the book is published by Simon and Schuster, um, and has won, have won and been nominated for multiple awards, among these are the Locus Award for Best Young Adult Book 2021, the John Steptoe Award for New Talent Offer 2021, and some of the good leads. There's a bunch of those. The book itself follows uh, Brianna, nicknamed Brie for the book, right here. As you can see her. Uh, and she starts at the University of Carolina on this accelerated course for high school students who are extra brilliant or something like that. And she does that with her friend Alice. Here she learns of the Arthurian uh, legends and the African American magic of voodoo, here called Woodcraft, is all real. And the story itself is basically her trying to navigate her place in this world and finding her role in it while also figuring out what happened to her mom, why her mom died and how all of this kind of fits together. But that's short, like short of the book, so let's talk a little bit about the cover. The cover's beautiful. Like it's really, really beautiful. I love this cover. I'm normally not a big fan of the, uh, like, have a character on the front and that's it. But this cover works with the dramatic lighting and the beautiful drawing of Priya. Um, does it say who wrote? It usually says, like, the cover. It's probably not this one. I'll put it on the screen. Um, the two colors of magic around her arm symbolize multiple dualities in the book. Among these are like the two worlds, the magical and the non-magical, the two magic systems, and just like the two Briannas that we keep talking about in the book, because we have the before and after Bri as she calls herself. Just the duality symbolism here is on point. The only negative, and it's this, I still hate quotes on covers when it's like review quotes. It's done better than most people have done it. It's not some giant thing plastered across her face or something. It's down discreetly in the corner. But still, remove that. It is so ugly. Nice. <laughs> so far, so good. Beautiful cover. And um, let's hope the book is as good as the cover is beautiful. <clears throat> so far, the book is uh, pretty good. There are multiple things I like. The first part here covers, you know, as you can see, up to chapter 10, which is also up to when the called part 2 begins. This part, that's much here. So, it's a fair decent part. Less than 100 pages, but still pretty decent amount of the book. Um, now, there are some things that worried me as I'm reading through this. And I think the big one is the, um, like the Twilight-esque feeling that some of it gets uh, gives to me. So the first thing is the very first description of Silver's pain. And that really felt like a take out of It felt like a description of Edward or another love interest. And uh, talking about love interest, the first section here gave me the feeling there would be a love triangle between three Selvin and Nick. One because so far there wasn't any chemistry between self breathing at all. I, I like it to stay that way, at least romantically. Now, let's get to some things I like. The friendship between Alice and Bree is so good. I really feel like they are old friends who've known each other for years. Dion does a great job of selling their friendship that they have a long history together without spending multiple pages of exposition. Something else the young does really well is the subject of skin color. This book is meant to highlight some of the problems black children face in southern US states and still feel. And Dion manages to not hide these problems nor make every moment about them. Re skin color is a major plot and character point. Of course we are in the southern US states. It cannot not be but it isn't the end-all be-all for the book or her character, which I think is amazing. Now the final thing I want to talk about is Bree's reason for joining the Authorian Order. The 
fact that she doesn't do it because it's cool, but it's more, it's like a deep personal reason, that, that's great, and it makes me totally believe she could do it, because she's just like, oh, it's cool, I wanna be that, I would believe she could, but now I believe because there's a deeper reason, so, really, so far, it's a really good book, let's hope the section 2 is gonna be as good. This uh, section is equal as great as the first. When reading it, I was convinced to believe it was either Legend Born or Shadow Born. And just to talk about the final thing in the section, I think root work made me certain that that was who she was. And probably more, but oh. also introducing the root work at the end is such a trust to make you want to read more. And it works. And I, I'm not mad. I like it. Now let's talk about romance. Because in the first section, Ri and Nick would get it together. And I compared it to Twilight. And this carried over in the first half of the section. But once they actually became a couple, I started to believe they were a good couple. And there was romance between them. It's quite clear to me that Dion is a first time writer. And that shows because I think the romance produced in this one. But it isn't bad once it gets going. In future books as series, I do believe she could do a better job. But still, I think it's a really good job for a first book. Relearning to teach the mess by inflicting pain upon herself is a little trick. Maybe too simple? Like, the order is over. Why doesn't anyone know how to prevent the mess? Huh? Or maybe they do, but haven't told anyone how to do it. I still felt a little too easy for me. In this section, we also get the most action so far. Let's talk a little about the action of the book, because there is some. The first is the attack on the lodge. Too much happened off me for my liking, like way too much. I don't get why not show us what happened. I suppose it could be a sign that you and Kiki the strongest writer when it comes to action. But I believe it was more of a story telling choice. But to me, it's wrong option. Then there was the trial of the crossing, crossing the open area between the two forests. I like how that was fun. Quite exciting. We are told Bree used to climb trees when she was young. This is never brought up. I can tell you all right now, never will be again. At least not in this book. So it really felt like Dia had ring the third inch corner. I don't know. Maybe some of her mag magic flares up and all of a sudden realize. I think that would have been a bit of a shame. I think it made Bree a little too much of a Mary Sue when it's a thing that won't be used again and wasn't introduced already. Oh, and while I remember, I'm so glad there isn't a love triangle. It wouldn't fit the story, and I feel the mistrust cell has so much better. He just wants what's best for your order, and the technique. I like that, it's simple and it works. So, I had a lot of negative Please bear in mind, I still think this section is better than the first, and I can't wait to read what will happen in the next part. Let's start off with the things I dislike and end it positively with the good things. Kinda like how we've been doing this, and I like the part. Um, it feels good ending a section discussion on a good note. The combat trial, let's get into it. I really dislike how she won all three. Especially when she was told constantly she didn't have to win, just lose while showing skill. But it did not be you have to win. But Dia, you should stick to your guns. I wouldn't have minded her winning one round by accident. Maybe in the second she the second round she then manages to disarm her opponent, who then gets her out of the ring. You know, add some flair. And then in the final round. She's again the best fighter, and he, I don't remember his name, but I know it's weird. Then whips the floor with her, but she managed to get some okayish hits in the end, you know? That's fine. I think that would have made the trial feel better and more realistic, like a show she has some promise. So, talking of things I dislike, uh, it's kind of like the narrative of racial being and us versus them thing. I don't think this is what Dean is going for. Um, 
But her mantra of learn from your past and never forget, but keep the anger, might be in wrong. To me, it would be better to have something like learn from the past and never forget, but remember, the current generation isn't the culprit here, right? It doesn't sound good. <laughs> It's not very flashy, but I feel it's way more of what Dion probably is trying to go for. So hopefully the rest of the book and the rest of the series, will, she will be having a more nuanced approach to the racial inequality. Now let's talk about things I like. Starting with the trial again, I really love how the training sessions up to the trial ended. I think Dion hit the nail right there. It was so fun and I felt like we were actually out of the there. Also, Cell decided to help her after realizing she was the one creating all the problems, she was more useless. Maybe have him teach her some techniques that directly counter some of her potential opponents. And that is how she would do so well in the trial. And you know, maybe like, oh, most likely you're gonna be up against so and so. And he prefers using the sword. And I noticed he has a habit of always following a forehand stroke with a backhand stroke while leaning on his left feet a bit too much, you know. And then go, so if you just kick out his feet, you will fall and then you could win. You know, something like that. Uh, definitely not a bad training session. I do think Dion could have done more to make him better. Also the realization of how Nick Seller's B are going to be great. I think it was brilliantly written and you feel the emotions of Seller and Bree. Definitely the best part of the book so far. Even, uh, even though it's the best part of any first set, the serious one I have more negative to say than the positive. The positive is so much, like the peaks of the positives are so much higher than the depths of the value of the negative, if that makes sense. So, you know, can we to get to the final section? So far, the book is actually really good. Last time, what I did like, the twist villain. Now, a twist villain is extremely difficult to write, and therefore it often falls flat in the big hero 6. Exactly, here does so too. I get she's trying to set up the villain for the next book, but the revelation just wasn't more than a shock. I, I didn't feel like I could have guessed it myself. So, and that's kind of the important thing about twist villain is you're supposed to feel like, oh, I could have guessed it myself. So what I would have done definitely is reveal the true villain at the very end of the book and end it there. Then throughout the book have the villain show some suspicious signs. Not a lot, maybe like three or four times, maybe one per section or something like that. And then have the rest of the evilness happen off screen. That can then be explained and then be explained and explored in the next book. Now, let's get to what I liked the very first chapter. In this section, there's the one with three, the dad, the waffle house, and the perfect. Because everything about the three's character, everything about the dad's character, everything about the story, the entire thing of healing, the loss, the feeling, you know, the loss of somebody. All that it hits it so well, and it leads perfectly into the root craft. She then gets better because of it. I'm pretty sure Dion either wrote the chapter of fiction first, or at least she decided that's what the entire book is going to lead up to. Generally speaking, it's a good section and a way to show how to talk about our problems and open up to each other. Generally speaking, this book is really good. So, the way it is shown who these ancestors is, is awesome. I, I'm not going to have too deep into it since it's a big reveal, and you know, it's, it would be a shame to be if that might be. But uh, I can say so much. I like it. In conclusion, Legend Born is the first book written by Tracy Dean in the Legend Born series. And it's definitely worth The book is funny, it's cute, and it has some surprisingly moving sections. It isn't a tough read when it comes to like the literary level, like she does use flowy rose to colored language, it's like 
poetry with poetry on it. But it's not either a difficult read when it comes to the emotional sections. They hit hard, they hit well, but it's not like they're gonna leave your tears. They're just, they're good. And I would actually argue that if you struggle with the last song, this book might actually help you out a little bit. Because it does work with that, and it works with it really, really well. Generally speaking, I do not praise this book enough. Really good from start to finish, and it's a great start to finish. It's a perfect debut album. I can't wait to read the rest of the series later. So I think you should read this book. And I hit the camera by accident. I'm sorry.